Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now you've seen the thumbnail, the death of style. It's another conversation about how style has actually taken a bit of a dip. And in this case, we're talking about sport, horse racing. Now horse racing up to this point has been one of the few sports which has seemingly valued the style and the panache of its spectators. In fact, horse racing is universally known as the sport of kings, enjoyed by the great, the good, and royalty. And our late Queen Elizabeth II, she was a huge fan of horse racing. She maintained a large stable of racehorses, and it was clear that she enormously enjoyed her many visits to the racetrack on any given year. Now here in the UK, horse racing really became firmly established in the 18th century. And it was championed by King Charles II, in fact, who was a great fan of uh, the horses. And in about 1750, the Jockey Club was formed. Now the Jockey Club, they, uh, their mission is to set the standards and the rules around horse racing to make sure that you know, everything is fair, is equitable and the reputation of the sport is maintained by people who participate and also the spectators. Now horse racing is one of the sports which is really enjoyed by everybody from the common man to the king or queen. Uh, there are 59 horse racing tracks here in the UK which is quite a lot for a relatively small country uh, and you know there are certain events throughout the year the Cheltenham Festival the Grand National for instance which are of enormous international repute in regards to the level of horse racing my own experience of horse racing started from a young age my father loves horse racing and we used to go to the the local tracks uh, you know during my childhood and as I was growing up I actually enjoyed gambling on horses myself to pass the time when I was in the military and I was home on leave. I would love to you know, go along to the track with dad and get involved in all that sort of thing. And I remember a certain part of the enjoyment of that experience uh, was seeing all of the people dressed up as well as all the jockeys in their silks and of course those remarkably fine racehorses, those beasts which are bristling with muscle and just you know desperate to run as fast as they could down the track. In latter years, I still enjoy the horses. Uh, my wife is an equestrian, she's got a horse, loves to ride, and you know we've enjoyed several corporate days at racetracks around the UK, Cheltenham, um, uh, Cheltenham, Chepstow, oh God, to name but a few. We've even gone over to the Longchamp uh, race course in Paris, in France, to uh, enjoy the Arc de Triomphe, again, one of the premier horse races around the world. Now as I say part of the experience of going to the track is yes of course it is about looking at the horses, it is about putting a bet on the horses you know challenging your your mental capability against the odds to try and win a bit of money but that's only a small part of it. It's very much a social activity as well and I know when I go to the events you look at all the other people particularly those who are in the members enclosures and who are in the premier parts of the track where a dress code is required. It's part of the majesty of going to a horse racing track because you know you have to dress up and it's part of the fun. You know it's the enjoyment and particularly if you go to one of the big races uh, you know uh, particularly the one which springs to mind is Royal Ascot where there is a strong dress code required. If you're a gentleman you have to wear full morning dress and if you intend to go into the royal enclosure a top hat is still required and do you know what I can't think of any other events uh, in sort of social life where you are expected to wear a top hat. So it is one of the last bastions of style really where your requirement to dress well is very much mandated upon you. Now just to clarify, right, you don't have to dress up to go to the horse races. If you just want to go into the stands and enjoy it, you know, from the, from the track side, you can wear what you want. But like I say, if you want to make a day of it, you can absolutely put some nice clothes on, go into the members enclosure, go into the premier st areas, pay a little bit extra. Often you have access to better bars, better restaurants, not terribly expensive, but you do have to dress. And it is expected the jockey club who control, I think, 15 
13 of the 59 race courses in the UK, they have previously said that if you're going into one of those areas, a dress code is required. You will wear a jacket. You will wear a shirt with a collar. You won't be wearing jeans. You won't be wearing sneakers. You will be smart and presentable and the same equivalent mode of dress for ladies as well. So it's universal. You're going to look good. You're going to respect the fact that the people around you are there to have a nice day and they've dressed up for the occasion. However, in just another sign that the way that we respect those around us by the way that we put our clothes on in the morning is going downhill is a recent article I read in my local, my local, the national newspaper, The Times, because gone are the dress codes with immediate effect from all of those racetracks which are owned by the jockey club here in the UK. No, their new guidelines is quite simply, people should dress to feel your best. That is it. Dress to feel your best. What does that mean? Well, basically, it means you can wear anything you want. Now, the reason why uh, the Jockey Club have gone on to, to, uh, to uh, outline this diktat is because basically they're saying, uh, and this is from Kevin Nevin Truesdale, the Jockey Club chief exec, says that racing has a long history of popularity with all backgrounds and it's important to remain accessible and inclusive. We hope by no longer placing an expectation on people as to what they should wear, we can highlight that racing is really for everyone. Now, they do go on to say, in fact, that they're not trying to discourage people from dressing up. What they're saying is they don't want you not to go just because you don't wish to wear nice clothing. And for me, that is a tragic indictment of the way that people think about style and the way they think about presenting themselves in public in this modern world. Because let's be honest, if you can't get dressed up for a nice day at the racetrack, you know, when are you going to get dressed up? What occasions in life are going to necessitate you wearing a collar and tie? I had an email from a gentleman the other day. I get many, many uh, pieces of correspondence from people who are also tracking the societal trends about the way that we present ourselves. And a gentleman wrote to me the other day uh, telling me about an occasion where he went to the opera. Now, you would think that the opera is one of the last bastions of cultural class where you can go to an event and you would expect everybody to dress for the occasion. Again, it's not being a snob. It's just about showing respect for the event that you're going to and the people who are going to be around you. So this gentleman tells me that he looked across and found that the person who was taking his seat next to him in the stalls was wearing <coughs> tatty jeans, a graphic t-shirt and grubby white trainers. And it actually detracted from his enjoyment of the event because he'd gone to the trouble of dressing up, of looking smart and presentable, showing respect to the performers, the, the venue and the people around him. And here was some gentleman who was, well, dressed to do yard work or dressed to do, uh, you know, some labouring activities on a building site. There's nothing wrong with dressing like that, but there is a time and a place. And that's all I've got to say about the jockey club's, uh, you know, decision to do away with with the dress code. Now I'm pleased to say that some of the better events like Royal Ascot for instance, probably the highlight of the racing year, uh, Ascot is not owned by the Jockey Club. So that requirement to wear full morning dress and to wear your top hat is still in place. So there are still events where you can go and dress up to the nines and really be among other people who are enjoying the spectacle and the aesthetics of the place as well. Now, if somebody has just stumbled upon this rhetoric that I'm throwing at the, the camera, you might think this guy here is clearly a snob. All right. He's talking about dressing in a certain way to go to a sporting event and it's going to exclude other people. Well, that's not true. I absolutely am not a snob. I do not wear a collar and tie all the time, every day. I dress in an appropriate and contemporary fashion for the things which I do in my life. However, I do believe that some certain things in life are best enjoyed in a traditional way, such as going to the horse races. 
you know, you wouldn't force uh, a reduction in dress code on universally across the board. I mean, let's look at Christmas. When we see Father Christmas, Santa Claus, or whatever you call him wherever you live in the world, there's a certain way you expect to see that character dressed. He's got his full, you know, Father Christmas outfit on. You wouldn't expect to see Father Christmas altering his style of attire to include a t-shirt and a pair of jeans, because that's the way everybody else is dressing in society. No, not at all. If Father Christmas dressed like that, Santa Claus, we would say, what a disappointment. I expected him to dress in the way that he's always been portrayed as. And I think the same is key when it, we talk about events like horse racing, like going to the opera. It is one of the few occasions in life where we can get dressed up and, you know, feel smart and dress like a million dollars and be the best sartorial version of ourselves for just a few hours. So for me, it's a tragic situation when I hear that the jockey club has reduced their dress standards. It is another nail in the coffin of the epidemic of casualization in the way that we present ourselves to the world. So no, I'm not a snob, but I do believe that some things are best left traditional. So my final word to you gentlemen is please, let us not be cowed down by these reductions in style regulations. Let us set the standard and set the tone. If you're going to an event where you would always have previously dressed up, carry on, dress your best, look the best that you can. Be the trend setter, not the trend follower. And being an intentionally well-dressed man, you can certainly you know, make a difference to the way that people see you and react. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, click that red button and subscribe. If you would like to contribute to the channel, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, or even drop me an email. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do that by buying me a coffee or becoming a patron at my Patreon page, where you will find extra material which I upload on a more or less weekly basis. So until the next time, when you're going to a social event, maybe it's the theatre, maybe it's the opera, maybe it's to the horse track, don't dress the way that everybody else is. Dress to your standard, look your best, and I will see you again very soon.